Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is me. It is I. I am he who is here. <laughs> what's going on? I am Lockout Man, and I am back. Back again with another podcast interview for you guys today. Now, this young lady is in, is in the Facebook group called Disgruntled or Disrespected Facebook. And, uh, and yeah, lots, <laughs> lots of stuff that's going on in there. Lots of stuff. That's, that's the Facebook group that features um, Rick Santiago, the young man that started a trucker's revolution against these brokers out here. So I tried to uh, reach out to uh, Rick and the other gentlemen, but of course, you know, Rick is super, super busy. So a young lady reached out to me and I was like, all right, cool. Let me go ahead and uh, chop it up with her. See what she, uh, see what she got to say. What's going on out in uh, DC right now with the, with the truckers versus the brokers. So I'd like to bring to the stage pronounce your last name. Uh, it's Franchway. Tracy Franchway. Your, your last name is what now? It's Franchway. It looks like Frankway because there's no E in there, but it's Franchway. 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 Tracy yeah. Franchway to the show. Yeah. What is going on, little lady? Well, I am actually not in D.C. Uh, these, uh, these people that are working for all of us out there in D.C., for all owner-operators, are just an amazing group of people. Uh, and you're right, Rick is extremely busy right now trying to gather evidence of various brokers, not just the big one we all love in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. uh, trying to gather evidence that they are requiring drivers to waive their rights to... Uh, that transparency that uh, we're entitled to. Hmm. Uh, they are, are actually putting that in their broker contracts, mm-hmm. or I'm sorry, their carrier contracts, mm-hmm. before they even sign up new carriers, or they are putting it right in their rate sheets. So hmm. Rick has been very busy trying to collect as many of those as possible to prove to the DOJ that we are being taken advantage of and being forced to waive something that we have a right to, hmm. which is the transparency on how much the load really pays. Okay, okay. So, uh, Tracy, um, so for my listeners and for my viewers, uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, are, are you a truck driver? or we're, 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 we're... I am not. I have been on the truck. I mm-hmm. rode with my husband for three years before we decided to go and get our own authority, mm-hmm. which kind of meant I was stuck in an office from that point on. Okay. But having ridden with him for three years, I know quite a bit about how much they go through on the road. I I see the soccer moms with the baby on board side and mm-hmm. squeeze in, mm. while allowing six inches, and then slam on their brakes. Mm. I have, I have seen uh, the stories of the truckers being robbed at rest areas or shot at truck stops. Uh, it's never been a more important time, I don't think. Any, uh, never been a more important time for truckers to have a nationwide truckers carry, uh, concealed carry. It's just, it's gotten really bad out there in some areas. Yeah, yeah, and, yes. of course, unless you own your own truck and you have your own authority, you don't really have the right to say, you know what, I don't want to go to Detroit. It's dangerous. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to go to this town because it's dangerous. I or so wherever. You... Not, I'm not picking on Detroit. I'm just saying that there are a lot of places that are more dangerous than others. Exactly. And, you know, if you work for somebody else, you don't have the right to say, "No, nah, I don't want to go there." So you and your you and your you and your husband, y'all y'all owner operators, but y'all y'all got your own authority. So you guys are carriers. We are. We are a carrier, and we actually we used to have two trucks. We're in flatbeds, so mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that we don't have to deal with that a lot of drivers do. Uh, you know, flatbed. There's way less appointments, so if uh, 
you know, like a reefer truck has an appointment for two o'clock in the afternoon, they might still be sitting there at two o'clock the next morning. Yeah. And they don't get paid for that time unless they for what they call detention. And a lot of these brokers are, I hate to say it, but I, I don't know what language you're allowed to use. No, you, 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 you're open, you're, <laughs> you're, you're open to express, you, you are open to express yourself on the Lockout Men okay. podcast. It's just that I'm her opinion, like her, curse, her opinion but... is her opinion, guys. Is that her opinion yeah. is her opinion. Um, there you go. Um, you go. So, but yeah, and a lot of these poor reefer drivers and dry box drivers that are hauling food and necessities, they really take a hit because it might, they literally might sit somewhere 10 hours before they're unloaded, which means they can't stack their loads. Mm -hmm. Stacking meaning uh, with flatbed, I'm, I'm pretty, I can pretty much reliably guess that my driver is going to be there two, maybe three or four hours. Mm -hmm. So that means sometimes I can book his loads a week in advance because mm -hmm. I know how long he'll be at each place. Mm -hmm. Dry box and van, they really are, or I'm sorry, dry box and reefer trucks really have a hard time with that because they never know if they might get hung up somewhere for 10 hours. Yeah, we, we get so hung I up. feel for these guys. We, we get hung up a lot. I mean, I, I was just, I was uh, a recent vis victim of a hang up. You know, I've been, you know, I got to the uh, receipt or to the shipper and I was stuck at the shipper for about a good five, five six, seven, eight, nine hours. And it's, it's ridiculous. What? And the worst part is you probably had to have an appointment to even go there. Yeah, we got right? yeah, I got there on the appointment yeah. time. That's that's what the bad part an about appointment it. If you're still there, if you're still 10 there hours 10 hours after. later. Yes, exactly. 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 Yeah. So, all right, so let's let's get into uh let's get into what's what's going on, man. I mean, the I mean, you guys well, you guys you know, started I, this Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go right ahead. You guys started this thing uh, you guys started this this thing May first, uh, May Day for you know for going out to D.C. and and to bring awareness of of what's going on in the you know in the field of in the world of brokering. You know, you guys. Yes. You know, Not, you guys are. I think that's what started it, but there's other stuff that's been kind of added to it that has been issues for truckers. Okay. Uh. Uh, yes, the brokers low paying, low balling us has started. I think this this last movement. But movement some there in DC. But I, I want to I, uh, I, I want to play devil's advocate for for a hot second. Okay. Richie. Um. Sure. So some of the some of the guys or some of the some of the brokers say that it is it is the it's the truckers' fault for what how the rates are because you guys bid for. The freight. You see what I'm saying? Yes, they have a point with that. There are, I'm sure, truckers out there every day undercutting another trucker. Mm -hmm. And I have had calls from brokers where, you know, I didn't agree to their price. So I told them, no, thank you. I'll keep looking. And then they'll call me back an hour later and say, you know, that truck I had on it. I agree to do it this rate, but if you'll take it for fifty dollars less, I'll book it through you. And I don't even reply; I just hang up. I am not going to play those games to undercut another driver. It's rude. It's unprofessional, and all that does is reward the broker with an extra fifty dollars. Why would I do that? So uh, if 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 so. The, if if the drivers if if the drivers out there or the own well. The lease drivers and if the they're owner, willing to take it, they're willing to take basically it. Basically, you're asking me if they're willing to take it, then they're basically screwing themselves. And I agree with that. I do. Uh, the problem is, yes, to an extent, it's the driver's fault that we have settled for the rates that we've been getting. But by the same token, uh, it's also the broker's fault for forcing you to waive that right to find out how much the load really pays. Hmm. Okay. There has to be some kind of accountability there for the brokers. It's uh, to force drivers to waive something knowing that it's causing these drivers to go out of business or to park their trucks and hope for a better rate. Uh, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. Why is it that if you go get a bank loan 
or uh, let's say a payday loan from some of these other places, not necessarily just a bank, it's illegal for them to charge more than 30% shipping. It's called usury. It's basically what they consider loan sharking. Okay. So why is it allowed for a broker to keep 60 and 80% of a load? That's load sharking. It's what? It's killing us. Well, you know, we it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, you know, for that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a company driver and I'm, I'm thinking about going, I'm thinking about going owner operator. So that's why I'm, my interest in all of this has peaked because, you know, uh, right now, as of right now, is really not a good time to either consider buying a truck or going into, it uh, is not. going into owner operations right now. But you're right. The, the, it is not. It's not good timing. <laughs> but the brokers, though, you know, but on the broker side, you know, they they'll tell they, they'll say that, hey, you know, we're here to make money. You know, it's like it's like how Walmart does it. They they buy cheap. They buy cheap and sell high. So like yes. for brokers, they try to they they get the best rate that they can get from, you know, the shippers. They'll take, you know, whatever cut they'll get out of it and then try to find the cheapest uh cheapest carrier to cheapest truck right. to to And ship I understand it. that. I understand the brokers need to make money. I do. And you know, they do put in more effort than I think a lot of these drivers uh realize. They have all the contacts. That means they have either put their feet on the grounds to go or feet on the ground to go meet shippers and uh earn those contacts that way, or they've put in phone call after phone call after phone call to try and gain these shippers as a customer. And, you know, they ha they do have some overhead. They might have their office, utilities, their phone, obviously. Uh, People they might they have a couple pay. of employees they have to pay, insurances they have to pay for those employees, all of that. I understand that. Plus, they have, even though the carrier has to have their cargo insurance and truck insurance and all that. Brokers also have to have insurance. Mm -hmm. It's just that theirs is only quarterly instead of monthly the trucker. Okay. You know, if I've if I've got a truck I'm paying fifteen hundred a month on for insurance, it's not quite that high. I'm rounding it because some people have newer trucks than I do. Um, so if mine is fifteen hundred per, per month per truck, theirs is probably around fourteen, fifteen hundred per quarter. And, you know, I understand why they have to have it. The the brokers have to have it in case the carrier's wreck doesn't quite cover the load to the shipper, mm -hmm. uh, to the customer. So that it makes kind of sense that they would have to have insurance as well. Uh, what I don't understand, you you know, I you mentioned Walmart, for example. Mm -hmm. Walmart has the big store they have to pay for. They have all that property for parking they have to pay for. Mm -hmm. They have utilities. Oh, I would hate to see their one month of their electric bill. <laughs> you know, uh, right? They have all those employees they have to pay for. So it makes sense that they have to have that kind of markup. A broker, their expense level is probably about a third of what it is for the trucker to run the load and pay their driver. Okay. So I have no problem with a broker making 20, 25, even 30 is a little high to me, but even up to that 30% mark, I really would not have ever said anything against okay. because it's reasonable when you consider, I don't, you said you were thinking about getting into owner operator. Mm -hmm. Have you ever checked on the rates out there for if you were to lease under another carrier? buy your own truck but lease under someone else yeah yeah it's about 25 percent yeah I'm, I'm doing they keep about 25 percent but they're brokering you they're providing a trailer they're providing the maintenance on that trailer the plates on that trailer they're handling all your if the paperwork for you most of the time they'll offer to keep a maintenance account for you where they hold on to your money in case you have a repair brokers don't do any of that why should they collect more than 25 hmm. percent Okay. Okay. So you guys, uh, so you guys, uh, this, you know, this, this all started this, this I, I think this is all started when, when Rick outed, um, was, uh, Tr Trinity logistics, uh, when the young lady came he on, his, yeah, uh, he was, came he was on kind of centering and himself. he, you know, she, she pretty much 
outed the company and you know that and it pretty much from there got the ball rolling as far as you guys getting together with these with these protesters uh protesters and everything yeah. so yeah on uh on may day of course you know rick and a, and a group of drivers went out there to the white house uh or went out there to dc to you know to do their thing the only thing that the, the only when the when I'm looking at it, like I said, I'm 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 not an owner operator. I'm a company driver. I'm just on the outside looking in. So excuse me for being, you know, for being for being not, you know, understanding. You see what I'm saying? Sure. But when I'm what, no, I understand what I'm what I'm what I'm seeing is I see you guys. Y'all went out there on the weekend, and on the weekend, I, I kind of felt like y'all went out there on the weekend. What did you guys expect to accomplish over the weekend? Uh, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be? You're talking about the day, May Day. Yeah, the May Day. I mean, wouldn't it have been better the for them? The reason they chose May Day, the reason they chose that day, mm -hmm. the first of May, is because there's a holiday called May Day. Right. May Day also happens to be the signal for help. You know, if you're going down an airplane, May Day, May Day. So it made sense for them to consider May first. Mayday mm -hmm. truckers are in a Mayday situation. We need help. Okay. We need, yeah. So that's why they chose that first of May, even though it was a Friday and it went into you know, the there week. Probably right. wasn't a lot of chance. Right. right. It went into the weekend, uh -huh. and I'm over here looking at it like, okay, what you guys trying to accomplish on the weekend? Wouldn't it have been better to go down there do doing it on a Monday? Day, you know, doing on Monday while yeah. everybody was at work. Um, the, yeah. the, the 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 broker situation has has took an ugly turn, especially with this pandemic that's that's going on. I mean, it has. It really. Have you, are you familiar at all with a, a website called Lane Honey? No, no, no. Let, what, what's it called again? Lane Honey. L A N E H O N E Y dot com. It's free. Okay. All you have to do is create a user ID and a login for it. And it will show you the true rate, real time. This isn't from rates three months ago like DAT shows you. Uh, it shows you the true rate shippers are paying in any lane you enter, but, and you just choose the type of trailer you pull. So if you're a reefer, you enter in the city and town of your last reefer load, where you picked up, where you dropped off, and it'll show you the real rates shippers in that area are paying to the brokers to take that load and then it will show you the rate the brokers are paying the carriers and then it shows you that percentage of how much the brokers are keeping okay so it has been an extremely helpful, helpful uh, tool for you guys. website to know about yes yes okay, lane honey. Okay. yep lanehoney.com right. and it's just as an example i've got a flatbed load pulled up right now mm -hmm. uh well in fact I can just give you an estimate here. There's a flatbed load, Linden, Alabama, to Gainesville, Florida, which nobody wants to go to Florida because the lanes right. there coming, out, coming, coming back out are awful. Coming out of Florida <laughs> is awful. Going into it's it is nightmare, great, but yeah. it's, coming out of it is 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 horrible. Oh uh, uh, yeah, it's horrible for yeah. a com it's horrible for a company driver as well. So, right, yep. But that one right now. The shipper rate, the rate the shipper is paying is $3.83 per mile. Okay. Like I said, this is today's rate. This isn't the past 90-day average like the AT shows you. Okay. The rate the carrier is getting paid is $1.81. $1.81 sounds respectable for an average load, except that not going in Florida. Because Florida coming out, you're going to be lucky to hit $1.30, maybe $1.40 even for flatbed. So the broker on that load is keeping fifty three percent. Okay. Over half. But like I said before, uh, like I said before, somebody, you know, may, maybe not you, but somebody is going to pull that load regardless. Exactly, and they're not going to realize how bad it is coming back out of Florida. We have never ever taken a load into Florida less than two dollars and sixty cents a mile because we know that coming back out. It is more worthwhile to deadhead all the way back up to Atlanta and find a load right. than it is to reward somebody with taking a dollar twenty load. 
So for so so you guys went to the White House, um, or we you, did not. Y'all, y'all didn't we go. Have not gone. Y'all didn't go to the White House, but y'all you know y'all down there in the area, and you guys uh, y'all waited outside of the White House uh, for for these couple of days to to get a meeting with the president. Uh, here you, fourteen days now. Yeah, here you says it's it's, uh, it's been fourteen days, and the president. Mm-hmm haven't talked to you guys yet but you said here he that he he, he invited big trucking companies he did yeah when i don't know if you remember when during the elections and stuff or right after the first election when he took over in the white house he did have uh, the trucks come on the white house lawn and invited some truckers mm-hmm. but he only invited the big boys the ata he invited i don't remember there was a big trucking company there that he invited. I don't remember if it was Warner or who it was, mm-hmm. but one of the big ones. And then um, a driver for them, uh, you know, a company driver that worked for one of the big boys. Mm-hmm. A wide I got left out, the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association. They got left out. Small. There was not a single owner operator to invited. represent to small to, business owner to represent the to small represent bi- our boys. Yeah, the small business guys. How do, how do you yeah. feel? How, how do you feel? And that's all we're asking. We just we want a voice. Uh, you know, the FMCSA, OT, the leaders of those, or you know, the the president of those, they've not driven before, so they don't know what small business owner operators are up against out there. Okay. Um, we just want a voice at the table. That's that was probably the why, number one thing. Why take it at the? Why why take it to? Why why take it to the president? Why not just take it to your 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 council, your your representatives? representatives? You know, we've. I think most of us have probably been asking our local representatives, Congress, you know, our senators, our House representatives, and all of that for a while. And there's always just something more important going on, or at least to them, in their eyes, it's something more important going on. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to my local rep, uh, mm-hmm. James White, down in uh, Beaumont, Texas. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome guy. And I emailed him pretty much that same email I sent you, and he gave us a shout out on Facebook. Okay. And he said he would work on it for us, do his best. So uh, a big shout out to James White there in Beaumont. He has been just incredible. Now, a lot of you guys, so, uh, a, a, a lot of the truckers, especially in the Facebook group, let me um, let me see if I can go and find uh, the, 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 the group. Uh, disrespect, yeah, here it is. Disrespected, disrespected truckers. truckers. Uh, mm-hmm. you guys, you guys gained, uh, 8,000, 8,000 members and counting, uh, since, wow. uh, since all this is, uh, all this has started and a gang of, a gang of truckers has now come out to, you know, show what's, uh, you know, what's the brokers are offering and, and, and the rates and everything, um, like right here, uh, this gentleman says, "Who's stupid to take a load like like that? Staying home, staying home, don't take cheap freight. Stay home, don't take cheap freight." So this is the total yeah. mile. The total miles is sixteen hundred miles. Total weight forty five. This requires a drive in. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the thing that he didn't put on here, uh, he didn't put how much he just he just said uh the miles and everything but i'm assuming the miles is or the 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 rate is cheap because he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have said anything but a lot of you know sure. for 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 well, these see, guys I've got my, oh I'm, I'm sorry i've got my load boards up give me one second and i'll, I'll show you one here uh find some well, for these guys to for these guys to say, you know, just stay home and don't take free, cheap freight and all like that. As I said before, you got you got guys that may may or may not have uh, a higher, I mean, a high uh, overhead or truck payment, uh, truck payments, right. or uh, it starts with an E. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, 
ah, oh, damn it, I can't, I can't remember it off of hand, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, they don't have, they don't have much, they don't have much as far as you know what to do. You know, their profit margin would be, you know, for them would be better for them to take the cheap freight. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Well, and that's just it. Not everybody has the same dollar per mile minimum they need to make. Right. But on average, even if you don't have a truck payment or a trailer payment, and all you have is your insurance and fuel and uh, IFTA and all of that stuff, bare minimum, I can't see any truck, any truck being able to run on less than, bare minimum, less than a dollar twenty-five a mile, and then of course another forty or so cents for the driver, you know, to pay the driver, okay. or. In the, if they own their own truck, of course, then it's their profit, okay. the part they pay their personal bills with. Uh, so right here, you say that uh, you say that you make up ninety three percent of all trucking companies out there, and you and you only a small business, yeah, yeah. And you only want you know you you only want at least 10, 15 minutes of of the president's time. That's what they're asking for in D.C. Yeah, they just want to get their point across. Now, yesterday we did have a piece of good news. Trump did send out his uh, Mark Meadows. Uh, what is he his, called? His people, I forgot. his people again to give you guys some hats. No hats. <laughs> yeah, this time he came out and gave his email address, and he he said Trump sent him out to talk. It's his. Uh, I want to say Secretary of State, but I know that's not it. It's he's like the number one guy Trump listens to, uh, like an like aide. Yeah, his... yeah, I can't remember what he's called. Uh, anyway, uh, he came out and listened for probably ten minutes or so, introduced himself, and kind of wanted a, a listing and gave his email to one guy. His email address made the guy promise to not put it out there, <laughs> and uh, that way. He could be in contact with Trump through him, through Mark Meadows. And uh, that is a small win. It's it's nice. I, uh, I don't, you know, whether you love Trump or hate Trump, I like that he sent this guy out because this guy's uh, smart enough to understand what he's being told and turn around and, and put it in words that Trump can understand. Um, so I, I was very impressed that he sent him out. Now, you know, so you, it, you know, some of the brokerage, uh, some of the brokerage people are, are pushing back. They're, 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 they're pushing, they are. they're pushing, they're pushing back hard on you guys. They say representatives of, of, of some of their companies has, has, has came out and refute, refuted, some of the president's allegation of price gouging of uh of, of you guys um yeah what what do you got what what do you got to what do you got to say about that as far as as far as the brokerage companies they're is, trying is to say that they're not price gouging yeah, they're or to say that, they're asking us for proof of no, it they're trying to say that they're not price gouging Okay, well then, why are they hiding that uh, CFR, whatever it is? Uh, why are they so insistent on on putting that out there for us to not request that? Hmm. What is good question? CFR forty nine CFR subsection three seven one point three. That's a good question. That's a good question. In in here in your in your email that you sent me out, you 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 asking that brokers to be required to show proof and uh, show proof of the true shipping rates by making it illegal for them to determine or demand that we waive the rights of their contracts. Right, right. One that or they need to have a limit put on on their percentage. Uh, so. In my opinion, uh, there are a lot of truckers out there that think brokers shouldn't make more than 10%. And I don't agree with 10%. I, you know, they're out there to make money too. They need a profit. I understand that. And it's not free to have an office and a phone and a, and utilities or pay any of their employees. I understand all that too. But there's one that one guy came out and said that brokers are only making 16%. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. 
maybe their employee is making 16%. You know, you've got a big, big company broker, and I'm not going to name any names, mm. but, you know, there's a couple out there that they have their own uh, brokers working out of their homes, and they just use that broker's MC to book those loads. Mm-hmm. So that broker that's working from home might make 16%. But the brokerage that hired them is making a lot more than 16%. Uh, You know, we know that. We already are aware of what they're making. Hmm. Okay. Well, you 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 guys got a fight on your hands. I mean, you know, we do. You you guys got to. You know, those aren't the broker thing. Isn't the only thing we're asking. We've got, for the most part, there's a few. There's like five or six things they're asking for. The, you know, the main one is a voice at the table for small business owner operators. Mm-hmm. That's all we want for any kind of trucker related legislation, including new rules, uh, either DOT or FMCSA or whatever. We just want one voice there to be heard and tell our side before new rules are made up. I think that's fair. Now, you got, you got uh, as I said before, uh, about the fight, it's, it's twofold. I mean, you guys got to fight with. You guys got to fight with, you know, with the legislation to get what you guys want as far as transparency and everything. But you guys also have another fight amongst amongst each other because a lot of these there's there's a lot of we can't agree on a rate. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of truckers out here. A lot of truckers. There's a lot that agree with you guys. And then there's a lot that don't agree with you guys. I mean, yes, you know, you guys are a tried lot to put timers that swear if, if we just stop taking cheap freight, freight, that it would fix itself. And yes, it could to an extent, but it wouldn't be a permanent fix without some sort of legislation changing, you know, some sort of formal broker reform. It wouldn't be a permanent change. Uh, yeah, we can all stop taking cheap freight for not that I think we've taken cheap freight, but it. it that's only going to work for so long before a new batch comes in and thinks a dollar sixty sounds great. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you got you got new drive you got new drivers that's turning in. I mean, that's turning over into our owner operations, and th- and, and they th- think a dollar sixty is, sounds right. great because they were making fifty cents a mile at their company job. Right, exactly. So, so how is it going to? It's going to be tough for yeah. you guys because you got you got right. that you you got that group of people right there that's saying, "Hey, I'll take it." But what you guys trying to do is trying to tell them, like, "Yo, hold up for a minute. Don't don't take it. Let us take. Let us get this uh, legislation." The most passed. important aspect of making a living in trucking is know how much it costs per mile to run that truck. Mm. You add up all of your expenses over the course of a month and divide by the number of miles, total number of miles you drove, not just the loaded miles. That's another thing these brokers aren't taking into consideration when they offer a load for a dollar a mile. That's on the paid miles. That's not on the hundred miles you had to drive to get to that load. Mm. So that dollar a mile just turned into 90 cents a mile or 89 cents a mile, whatever the case may be. You got to cover for Because you had to pay for your own deadhead. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So you, so you, you, you also put in your your email. You you sent me a long email. <laughs> yes, um, I did. This is the same email I've been sending to FMCSA, yeah. DOT, White House, yeah. congressmen. I've been sending it everywhere. Yeah. I every I can't be in D.C. I cannot afford to make a trip to D.C. right now. There's just no way. You, Not you, with you got you. You say here. To keep their bills. You say here that you request no more unfair advantages to mega carriers who self-insured. They should have to pay uh, eleven hundred to fifteen hundred per month truck insurance premium to insurance premium. level the playing field. Yes, yes, and you know why I'm saying that. Uh, there's Swift for example, is what they call a self-insured company. Right. And uh, the, like, these like, big uh, carriers aren't required, like US aren't, Express. aren't required to pay 1100 Prime. Yeah. Some of these big companies, uh, not only do they run a school and throw a driver in a truck after a couple of weeks of training, mm-hmm. uh, so there's that safety issue. They really haven't had a whole lot of time uh, 
behind the wheel before they're basically turned loose with a trainer mm-hmm. who is up to sleep while they're driving. Mm-hmm. That's not right either. That's not safe. So that... uh, and then to find out that they also don't have to pay insurance rates like the rest of us do, mm-hmm. uh, it's just not right. And the draw, the big drawback to that is, let's say I'm in a parking lot and somebody backs into me, another owner-operator backs into me. Their insurance will cover normally. My insurance will ask for it. Right. Uh, they will ask that their insurance to cover my downtime for the time it takes to get that truck repaired. Right. Body shops are notoriously slow. Sometimes it can be two and three weeks waiting for them to get your truck in and then another three or four days to get it actually fixed. So that's it. Sometimes it can be up to a month of downtime, but that truck wasn't bringing in an income. My insurance company will fight their insurance company and get that downtime so that we don't have a month's worth of lost income. Okay. Well, what do you have to do when it's Swift that backs into you? Because there's no insurance company for my insurance company to go after. Oh, okay. So what do I, what has to happen there? I have to sue Swift that mega carrier. All right, you got to go through the courts and everything to get that downtime. Okay, okay, yes. Okay. Because I don't want them to just fix my truck. I need that income back. So to get that downtime, they need to have real insurance, or I have to spend money on a lawyer to sue them. All right. It's not right. So you said now, as I said before, and you you have agreed that with this uh, pandemic that nobody has seen coming, well, maybe a few people in the past, but, you know, it, it hit us hard now, you know, especially you being flatbed. There's not that much uh, freight out there to to roll because, you know, the distribution companies or the companies where I'll pick it up at. Believe it or not, I'm on right now. I'm on a load board right now. Mm-hmm. And I put in a uh, what town did I put in? I put Waterloo, Indiana, because it just happened to be one of the ones that showed on that lane, honey. Within a hundred mile radius of Waterloo, Indiana, right now, there are 184 flatbed loads. Okay. So the market has not dropped dropped as much as the brokers or as people would have us believe okay. because of COVID. There might have been maybe double the loads before COVID, mm-hmm. but it hasn't dropped out of sight to where there's no loads either. Oh, okay. Not so, by any means. So so C nineteen really haven't re- really haven't uh, affected you. It did. It did slow us down. It just didn't drop out of sight. I mean, there might be some towns where there might have been 20 loads going out before COVID, and now there might only be 10, or there might only be 7. Now, so, I'm not saying it didn't slow things down, it just didn't kill it. Now, if it's only like, let's just say what you just said, if it's only like 7 loads that's going out, and you got say like 10, 15 owner operators, 10, 15 owner operators bidding on that low I, I guess again is it is it the broker's fault for taking the cheap driver advantage yeah no if it's a bid load no it's not but when they are posting a rate on the load board that is well below what it should be and then you look on that lane, honey, and find out how much the shipper is paying to run that load. And the broker is keeping 70%, 80% okay. when it's the drivers or the trucker, I should say, the owner-operator has triple or quadruple the amount of overhead to run the load, then that's not right. Why... Uh, like I said, why are they keeping 70 and 80% of some of these loads when the shippers are still paying, you know, three dollars a mile to see it offered on a board for a dollar a mile makes you mad. Now you know what? <laughs> now it's it's like, oh man, how how can I say this? So it's it's like um, it's it's like with the with the brokers before all of this, they tried to cover. I guess what you guys are saying, they trying to cover up what the what the shippers are paying them they don't the brokers don't it's it's like it's like uh it's like an entrepreneur type person i i don't want to tell you how much i I don't want to tell you how much i'm getting paid you see what i'm saying i I don't want to tell you how much because i feel that it's none of your business how much 
I'm well, getting Well, not paid. just that, but you're a company driver. A lot of times the companies don't want you to discuss right. how much. But I'm I'm just saying, like, so, if I, you know, I'm just saying as for an entrepreneur, because, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, I, I haven't owned a truck, but I have, you know, owned businesses in the past. And you yeah. know what the what the what the what the companies that I was contracted with in the past, I you know what I was getting like when I was let's say I had a I had a few drivers to I had a few drivers and I had this one driver that wanted to know how much the company was paying me so he can so he could say how much he wanted. It's not I, you know I told right. him you're my employee. It's it's none of your business how much I'm getting paid. Now, if you don't like, if right. you don't like how much I'm paying you, then you don't have to work for me. That's on the flip side. It's the same thing with these brokers. We, I guess they saying, and they, I guess they're saying, okay, don't worry about what we're getting paid. Just worry about how much we're, how much we're paying you. And if you don't want to do it, then we'll find somebody else that will. So, but you guys are coming together and trying to open that part up by having them, by forcing them, per se, by forcing them to say, okay, I want to know how much the carriers are giving you. You mean the shippers? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the shippers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to know how much the shippers is giving you. And we're going to go to D.C. to force the government to do it now i guess you know i i guess as far as i, I guess as far as well and that's like why me, i said and or right that's why i said and or on that one because uh you know that was the number two thing that they're asking in dc is that brokers either be limited to a fair percentage or or, or well i should say and required to show the proof of the true shipping rate but i would be happy with either one of those because if they, if either one of those happened, then truckers would make a livable wage again. Yeah, but is it? I is think it, it's is unfair. It, like it you fit, just pointed right. out, it, I think it's unfair right. is it, to is it fair ask for, how much. Yeah, that's what I was trying. Yeah, is it fair for you guys to 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 go and ask uh, how much that they that you know that they're getting? I mean, it's like like I said before, it's it's like quite as it kept. It's none of you guys' business how much. They're getting the only business that you guys have with them is what they're giving you. But let me flip this on you too. Is, do you think? I, I know you guys is going out and y'all asking for the president's help, and y'all y'all going you know to get the government help. But we, basically, we're asking for his recognition because. Yes, he cannot change laws by himself. Right. Everybody knows the president doesn't make right. laws, but he can put pressure on Congress. He can put pressure on the DOJ. He can put pressure on the FMCSA and DOT. But is it? That's all we're asking is for somebody that uses those tweet fingers to explain to all of these people what's happening. But is it? All of these agencies. But is it? But. But do you guys really want the government to come in and? and do something do more regulation yeah. why not trucking is one of the most highly regulated companies out there of uh, industries out there right but now. but that's what i'm saying the we government has put in that's what i'm after regulation. exactly that's what i'm saying the government has put <laughs> has put a lot of regulations on on trucking as it is truckers you know right but none on hardly anything on brokers oh. why well, it's still transportation industry. Why are truckers taking the brunt of all these regulations? Mm. Why is it only the trucker that pays? Mm. Okay, 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 okay. That's what's up. All right, so you... so And it's not so bad. I mean, if you think about it, look at 30 years ago, truckers, owner-operator truckers made about $50,000 a year after all their expenses. That was good money 30 years yeah. ago. I mean, the trucking right? industry. I mean, actually, the, truck, the trucking industry was up there. Was was up there with with uh, with doctors, lawyers, and all like yeah. that. You guys was up yeah. there, but the, now, but now it's like you you're down. At, you look at owner operators' wages now after all their expenses. It's like fifty five to sixty thousand a year. That means our income has only raised by maybe fifteen percent over thirty years. 
now look at a fast food worker. Thirty years ago, minimum wage was three thirty-five an oh, hour. Yeah. Now they're hold on, making wait, like wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Bring, let's let's bring that back so that the new jacks, that the new jacks, that's you know the not the baby boomers. We we talk about the new jacks. Minimum wage was thirty. I mean three dollars and thirty-five cents. Yes, now what you got? Thirty-five an hour, thirty years yeah, ago. Yeah, what you guys doing now? Trying to fight for McDonald's to get it at fifteen dollars and all like that? Imagine. Yes, and on average, there's um, even in states that aren't paying fifteen minimum wage, the McDonald's these days is starting like nine, yeah, eleven, thirteen an hour. Yeah, and still imagine so three dollars and thirty-five cents. <laughs> triple their income, and truckers only gained fifteen percent over that same thirty years. But yet we have all these higher taxes, mm -hmm, tolls, mm -hmm, regulations, mm -hmm. 30 years worth of new taxes and regulations, e-logs, expenses that they didn't have 30 years ago, but our, our rate only went, raised 15%. Mm -hmm. How? How did that happen? I mean, doctors, you know, I don't know, 30 years ago, they probably made 50000 a year. Now... Lord knows what they're making. I don't even want to guess. But the point is, is every industry out there, that uh, wage has increased along with, you know, the expenses of 30 years. Not trucking. Oh, okay. Trucking has barely, barely increased. Exactly. And we pay more now than we ever have yes, before. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You said that, um, the, you know, to talk about C-19 a little bit. You says that uh, that the brokers have took advantage of uh, of the pandemic to collect fifty percent more and sometimes and upwards of eighty five percent of the shippers pay more than double than what That's, they pay for the truck. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't know if you've ever hauled a load. Being an, uh, being a funny driver, you probably still noticed this. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, it's like one in every thirty or forty. You'll get a bill of lading that shows the shipping charges on it accidentally or they didn't know to leave it off and you being a company driver you may not know how much your company got paid to haul that mm -hmm. load but if once you're an owner operator of course you do know that amount so let's say you pick up a load and that bill of lading says that the shipping cost was three thousand dollars and your company got paid twenty two hundred of that okay that's eight hundred dollar profit for the broker that's not too bad, depending. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, it could be better, but $800 is a fair profit on something they didn't have to spend fuel on and they didn't have to pay a driver on and they didn't, you know what I'm saying? It's a fair profit for basically having a phone line and making phone calls and sending a fax okay. or an email. All right. Fair profit, right? 800 bucks. Well, now that COVID is going, that $3,000 load, they're trying to turn around and pay the driver. A thousand, eleven hundred. How much is that broker making now? It's making a lot. <laughs> a lot of money. Eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars, maybe up to two thousand. You also said right here, as I scroll down a little bit more, you said brokers need to be limited to twenty to twenty five percent maximum. Why is why is That's it illegal true. usury loan uh loan sharking when a financial institute's in charge over thirty percent, but not when the broker does? Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. So instead of loan sharking, they're load sharking, basically. They're holding loads hostage until find a truck willing to run basically themselves into the ground for no money. Because there are literally, can you think of a single truck that could haul a load for a dollar a mile? <laughs> Not including their deadhead miles. You know, it's. You know, as far fuel alone, even if you get great fuel mileage, fuel alone is probably forty cents. You, you know, that. I got I got people, I, I got different people that comes in, uh, that emails me, that tells me in my comments, especially when I when I bring up this particular topic about the brokers. Now, there's to me personally, there is a difference, a huge difference between an owner operator that owns their own truck. And a lease driver that's leasing the truck from a mega carrier. Now the lease drivers is yeah. coming on saying, "Oh, hey, we we getting, you know, we we it's not bothering us. We we getting paid. We getting a dollar fifty 
a dollar, you know, a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy five a load. Uh, one driver said in my comments that, you know, he got like two dollars and ten cents a load. But their company, what they they they, they leasing from a mega carrier. So right. and you know how they're doing that? How, because the mega carriers have their own shipper contracts. They have their own shippers. They don't have to go through brokers to find loads. Those big mega companies have enough trucks that shippers are willing to work with them. But what do you... You know, when you're a one or two truck company trying to go to, say, Nucor, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, Nucor's happy to work with uh, directly with the carrier. The problem is, is they want you to guarantee so many trucks per week to haul their loads. Well, when you only have one or two trucks, that's kind of hard to guarantee that you can make ten loads right. a week. For what them. do you say? But what um, do you say? But what do you say to to lease drivers that's that's leased on to a U a U.S. Express, a Swift, a Pam, a pre uh, uh, a Prime? What do you say to them that that they're the ones that's coming and saying, I I, I don't I don't see what the problem is. Well, sure, because they are making the money because their mega carrier is getting that shipper's rate instead of the broker's pay or, you know, what the brokers want to pay. So, of course, they're still getting the dollar fifty or dollar sixty, dollar eighty, whatever it is they need or they settle for, I should say. Um, and their carrier is also making the money back on that truck plus interest usually. So if they bought a... I don't know, a ninety thousand dollar truck on a lease from their carrier, their mega carrier. Mm -hmm. They, by the time that truck is paid off, I guarantee there's interest on it. Okay. By the time that truck is paid off, they have probably actually paid more like one hundred and nineteen, hundred and thirty nine thousand for that truck, plus of course all of its maintenance and stuff, uh, and then. Some of them will offer free use of a trailer. Some of them will charge an extra 5% for use of a trailer. It just depends on the carrier or the, you know, the, the mega, the mega carrier, carrier okay. I should say. All right. So. Right. Each one has its own offers, you know, options with leasing one of their trucks or at least purchasing one of their trucks. Right. So not only is that mega carrier making that interest off of each truck they sell, but they're also able to go directly through the shipper because they are able to provide a set number of trucks per week to that shipper. Okay, okay. Well, that's what's up, Tracy. Now, another thing that's being brought up out there in D.C. is the no idle laws. Why is it that a cat or a dog is illegal to leave in a hot car, but, hey, it's okay for the driver to suffer and try to sleep through 110 degrees? Oh, I agree. Not be refreshed. Yeah, I, I, I the agree next with morning. that. I, I went to, uh, I, I was in a state. That uh that said it was no idol and I was like no nah, no nah, that's that's not gonna happen I'm I'm gonna it's, it's not nah, right it's most not. truckers I know would be willing to pay that ticket if they get a no idol ticket because you can't sleep when it's 110 nah, degrees you and you're sweating there in your bunk you know you're not gonna get good sleep not you know they want you to take a 10 hour break. But they don't care if you're miserable during that whole ten hour break. <laughs> right. It's crazy. All right. Well, Tracy, you say that you say that you guys need legislators to stand up for you guys in the in the entire industry. Uh you feel that is uh going, you know, that the industry is going jobless. Um you you say Well, and then you've got auto autonomous trucks. They're already rolling. What but why should they get an unfair advantage by not having to stop every 11 hours like we well, do. Well, you know what? That's I you know what? I as far as autonomous trucks, my my opinion is 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 very is very on uh autonomous trucks because I feel that the dry the, the, the autonomous truck is still going to need a driver in in the truck. It it will. <laughs> you yeah, know? because there are certain cities that they can't de rely on those sensors to tell them, you know, if there's detours stuff like right. that. So uh, yeah, I agree. They do. They for now, autonomous trucks do still have to have a driver in them for those situations. Flatbed, I feel pretty secure that it will never fully take over for a flatbed right. uh, division because you still have to have somebody secure the load, uh, and you can't depend on necessarily all shippers to know how many straps 
is needed or whether or not you need to throw a chain here or uh, how many bungees is needed on a tarp or whatever the case is because each shipper is different. So it's a lot easier to train one driver, even if the truck is an auto, uh, automated, that knows how to properly secure the load and just have him ride in the autonomous truck. Well, that's fine. But the problem is, is I just don't think it's fair to allow that autonomous truck to drive 24 hours straight through when no other truck is allowed to do that. All right. Who does the, you know, it? every, every time you finish a shift, you are you have to either do a post-trip or a pre-trip or whatever. So if it's autonomous and it's driving straight through for 24 hours, that's 24 hours without a pre-trip or a post-trip. Well, it's just, it's not well, right. Well, Tracy, uh, uh, friends. France way. France. Fr- yes. oh, okay, there we go. I got it. France way. <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's just there's no E, so it doesn't look like France way. Okay, yeah. France way. Uh your your yep. your um your company, France Way Transportation. Uh you guys transport. Tra- uh mm-hmm. transport. You guys is uh you banding together with uh with other respectable truckers to go out to DC. Uh they're out in DC right now. Um, they're out in DC right now, still protesting, uh, still hoping to get uh to get a face to face with uh with 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 the president. With uh, Trump. hopefully, yeah, even a phone call. They said that they would even be happy with a phone call, just something to explain what it is we're asking. We're not asking for the moon. We're asking for five or six different points just to to keep trucking, uh, small business trucking going. We're not asking for any kind of stimulus. We're not asking for any kind of taxpayer funding. We just want a fair chance to make a livable wage and 15% higher than it, what it was 30 years ago is not a livable wage, exactly. not with inflation. Exactly. Well, well, Tracy, I appreciate you coming on, uh, coming on with me and, uh, you know, sharing the experience of uh, what's going on right now. Uh, I do hope that everything works in, in, in you guys' favor. One more point I'd like to ask oh, you. Ahead. With you being a company driver, just one more last mm-hmm. point. With this COVID out there, is your company providing you the safety, masks, gloves, all of that? Uh, I'm I'm going to be honest and say I am not sure because I, I have my own PPE. You haven't been back home for a while? I, I have my own P, uh, PPE. I have my mask. I got my gloves. Oh, I got my sanitizer. Well, I got, you know, I got all yeah. that. As far as, as far as the company, the company itself, I, I am not sure because, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't it. went back. You know, I haven't went back to the, sure. uh, to the uh, terminal yet. I, I've just, I've been out, I've been out running and, from here, you know, the from here I, I go home, that, and then from home I come back out. The reason I asked that, yesterday there was a trucker discovered, sadly dead, in his truck. He had gone to a truck stop, called the manager, and asked her to call him an Uber to get him to the hospital. Yeah, he yeah, he I'm, fami- yeah I'm familiar with went that. Went to the hospital. You saw yeah. that. Okay. He went to the hospital. They tested him, told him the test results wouldn't be ready for three to five right. days. The manager of that truck stop, and I don't know if it's a man or a woman, it didn't say, went out and checked on him every day. And on that third day, he was discovered dead. Uh, so I'd like to give a shout out, first of all, to that manager, truck stop manager for caring. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, the hospital sending him back to his truck in that condition should be held responsible, in my opinion. But next, next point of this, me asking you about the masks and stuff. Drivers are very rarely ever sent home for burial if they die out on the road by their company. Yeah. As a company driver, shouldn't that be the company's responsibility to make sure if you, something happens to you out on the road that your wife gets you back for burial? Oh, for sure. It's just for sure. It's not yeah, I, right. Uh, yeah, because there's it's there's been a right. point, there's been plenty of drivers, and especially a few that I that I have covered in the past. You know, there was a female a couple of years ago. Uh, she, you know, she was discovered discovered deceased in her truck. Um, uh, and yeah. there's there was co- a couple of other drivers that was discovered in their trucks uh, deceased too. So yes, yes, I agree that it should be up to the company 
it should get, be a requirement for yeah, the company to, get, to pay for yeah, that. Yeah, to I think. get their loved ones back to, you know, back to their loved ones. You know what I'm saying? So for burial, for burial. yeah, because I mean, yes, it's yeah. I mean, I don't know because I haven't checked on it in a long time, but it, it's not cheap to send a body <laughs> two or three thousand miles across <laughs> exactly. the country. Uh, exactly. So it just seems fair that, that the company, if nothing else, offer that as right. an insurance perk or something. Hey, for five dollars more a month on your truck payment, we will pay for your body to it's, be sent exactly. back home if something happens exactly. to you. Just something to provide that for your loved ones if something happens to you. I I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, Tracy Francois Fr- Francois, I thank you for coming on. And uh, chopping it up with me. Thank you. Uh, if you guys want to uh, know more of what's going on right now, definitely go to the Facebook group, Dis- Disrespected Truckers. Uh, and if you want to get a, get in, how, how can they get in contact with you, uh, uh, Tracy? Uh, we have a website, translatetransport.com. All right, all right. So if they will, if anybody need to get in contact and you know get on board with the uh, with the uh, protest of what's going on uh, out in D.C. and you guys want to be a part of it, definitely uh, go to uh, fr- what is it, francewaytransport.com. Well, no. If they want to join that D.C., I'm not in D.C. I haven't been able to afford to go. But if they want to go to D.C., there's a lady Janet Sanchez mm-hmm. in that. Uh, disrespected trucker contact her she'll know what's going on she's been the one pretty much uh, doing all the live feeds since Rick had to leave and go gather evidence there you go there you go so So, Janet Sanchez she would be the one to contact I I appreciate you coming on and if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me or just have a conversation with me just look me up lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com or you can hit me, you know, hit me at the text, 216-60020. Wait a minute, 2090. Forgot my phone number. God damn it. Or you could just uh subscribe to me on Instagram and hit me up in the DM. Yo, uh my platform is your platform. I would love to talk to you, see, you know, share your experience or share whatever you got going on out here. You know what I'm saying? My name's Lockout Men. This is um this is my uh, this is my guest Tracy Francois. Thank you for coming on, ma'am. Is there any uh, is there any advice that you want to give to uh, to any potential truckers that's interested in coming into the game? As far as uh, you know, as far as what to look out for and stuff like that. Just don't all cheap freight right now. That's our only tool that we have at our disposal. Knows what your bottom dollar is to run for a mile and don't take less. There you go. There you go. Wise words from a wise lady. All right, guys. (laughs) Y'all take it easy. And on that note, we are gone. All right. Thank you.